So, so we talked a little about the family, but one thing that we never talked about in this podcast or with anyone else who has a family living overseas is what's the family life like overseas? Like, is it, I mean, because like you see a lot of stuff, like a lot of, I mean, you're asking a lot of your partner and your family, you know? And then obviously when you get older, you're right, right? The kids are getting older and it's like, okay, do I want to keep doing this? Um, but what was like the initial conversation with, with when you have with your wife, like you're saying, hey, come overseas and what's like the difficulties and so, I mean, maybe the unknown uh, good things that come out of it. Yeah, it was scary at first, especially for her because um, she's a very like hardworking, um, goal-oriented person. So she was like, graduates, graduate college, go get my nursing master's degree in nursing and she's a registered nurse. She's like, look, I'm ready to work if we need to. So she's excited, like it's saying something like she's excited to get back um, home to wherever we're going after volleyball is finished and start working. And, you know, like, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's you know? crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like that's a, that's just a testament to kind of her character or whatever. So that was difficult at the beginning to be like, well, I'm not going to work. I can't work in Italy because communication like you got to be fluent in the healthcare like i'm dying yeah, is an yeah important yeah. like yeah. like wait what, do you speak english <laughs> <laughs> like a little slower a little slower i can't breathe <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so so that wasn't an option and so so she was just learning to kind of rediscover herself in that moment as well right and to be independent in different ways and so we got into the swing of things. We got, you know, this is when we were younger um, with no kids. And it was like, we were get to, getting to explore different places or cook a lot. We cooked a lot. And we, we, we still love cooking. We, we cook a lot, but we cook like nicer meals. Now it's just like kids, simple and fast. Right, right. Um, but what, something we talk about a lot, um, even now is when we're overseas it's just us for 99 percent of the year and so we get to spend super quality time together with no sense of obligation to go and see cousin jane and auntie shelly you know like we love going and seeing family in the summertime but there's like sections of like okay this is family time this is when we could just overflow with family time and then at towards the end of the summer it's like i can't wait to get to just spend some alone time with you and cruise and not have to do a whole lot of stuff you know totally, and to totally, get that totally. quality time and now with kids even more so it's like okay i wouldn't trade the grandparents and the cousins and the aunties and uncles time for the world like that's our favorite part of the year but there are incredible positives to be able to be over here with them all the time putting them to bed every night um you know taking them to school and whatnot it's uh and spending that quality time so there are pros and cons for sure but we, we tend to try to always look towards the pros did you did <laughs> you ever sure. feel did you ever feel like bad like asking so much for your like from your uh, significant other at all or was it just kind of like she just kind of was like you know what it was like whatever happens or no whatever punches come our way we're just gonna roll with it yeah i think i give a a whole lot of credit to brooke um mm -hmm. i think we've definitely had some hard conversations i think she's definitely had to sacrifice way more than i have and that's an understatement but she is so supportive and she's so um able to roll with the punches and also we've we've learned together to kind of look towards the positives and look how beneficial this is and how unique this is in uh in experiences in life and how that will affect not only ourselves but our kids lives um with you know just gaining perspective into the world that we live in and then not only this little bubble in hawaii or america that we're in um it's super super valuable so we definitely, you know, it's not easy, but how often do you get to, you know, if we're back in America, we have this discussion quite a bit when 
things get a little harder and we get like emotionally a little harder. If we're back in America, what would we probably be doing? She'd be working as a nurse. I'd be working, let's say in theory at nine to five. How often would we get to see our kids? Kids would be in daycare and mom would be on an overnight shift. We wouldn't be able to put her kids to sleep and dad would be gone and only being able to have dinner and put the kids to sleep. So like just that in and of itself, like we get to spend such quality time with our kids and watch them every day grow up. Like it's a, <clears throat> it's a pretty spectacular situation. Although there are so many different negatives that you can look at um, to be able to like compare it to where we could be. It's a pretty incredible thing. And so we kind of come back to that, but yeah, it, it, in short, yes, there have been a lot of emotional conversations, hard nights and moments where it's like, I could be doing this or, you know, I miss my family. I, I wish we had a little more help here because can't just call grandma and grandpa when you're in the middle of Russia. Yeah, Jesus. You know, like I'm sick. Babies are sick. I haven't slept. Like, can you come over and watch them for a little bit? You know, that stuff, those luxuries aren't afforded as much, but it's also like an experience that we have that, that makes us stronger, that makes our kids stronger. And we like to think of it as a positive. 